how to prevent reinfestation of internal parasites. We all know that animal health, they are the basic foundation to animal production and no doubt the parasitic diseases, they are causing considerable economic losses to the developing country and involving uh, to the developing world involving India as well as our uh, uh, which are playing a very important role in the economy of India as well as of our state also because they are the livelihood for the poor people, we all know. And they, there is no doubt inherent risk which is due to in uncertainty in the rainfall and the recurrent draft, draft situations. So they are working as, on the other hand, we are also seeing them as a poor man's cow also, we know, because they are helping the farmers during the crop failures time uh, to the rural, landless, marginal farmers, we can say. And they are providing a financial reserve to all the categories of the people via meat, milk, fiber, manure, hair, which is, means each and every portion of the body of these small ruminants are of prime importance and they are of economic values. But as we know, a coin has always two sides, means this industry, the sheep and goat industry, no doubt it is beneficial to our small farmers, marginal farmers in one way, but they are playing a, means we can say there are certain cons also for this in, uh, industries. Coming to the pros, we can say, no doubt, as they are easy to raise and manage, they require very low investment, low feed requirement are there we can make them to graze anywhere in the natural habitat they are highly disease resistant moreover they are easy to transport market potentiality is there but on the other hand we see them as the fertility rate of these animals are very low moreover they have reduced working capacity low weight lower milk production high treatment cost and one and above all the mortality that is higher in the case of this small ruminant because of this parasitic diseases are playing a very prime important role which is just dragging behind this industry not making them to flare up in the country coming to the present scenario we know india which constitute the which is holding the highest livestock uh, population, we can say, which is contributing 15% of goat industry as well as 6% to the sheep industry in the world population. And in India, the scenario is 18% of the goat population it is contributing, as well as one fourth of the sheep population they are contributing in the economic upliftment. But what is the effect of this parasitism? We all know because of the various diseases involving viral, bacterial, and moreover, this parasitic diseases, they are dragging this in, uh, industry behind. So they are of significant, we can say them, they are acting as a significant threat to this industry and small ruminant producer in general. They are causing economical losses also. And among this all group, we know, I will discuss in detail in the uh, other slides, like what are the common parasites, because this is today's topic that is totally restricted on how to prevent the reinfestation. As we all know that uh, the topic is well suited with the zero uh, grazing concept. So definitely I will try to relate this topic with that one. So we know that among this major problem of parasites in the small ruminant industry, GI parasite, that is gastrointestinal parasites, which uh, mostly constitute the helminths uh, of three groups, that is the trematodes, cystodes, and nematodes, they are of prime importance. And mostly they used to cause the disease is mostly clinically characterized in the condition, means in the field conditions by enteritic conditions, anemia, we can see anorexia, poor appetite, emaciation in the case of animals, and finally leading to the death of the animals. So coming to the next slide, that is uh, this slide pictures clearly shows that we all know that ship is known as the storehouse, or we can say it is uh, also known as the museum of parasite means each and every organ of ship body they are whether it is gi tract reproductive tract respiratory tract on any internal organs vital organs they are not being left being infected by the parasites along with that even the external surfaces by the various group of ectoparasites as well as the facial sinuses the nasal sinuses by different bots also so today uh, by this slide clearly we can have an idea what are the important parasites that are being always rest 
restricted in these two group of animals. So we know that as these internal parasites, they are con constituting a problem uh, by lowering the production and productivity of these small ruminants mostly. So how to relate the things? We all know that mostly this lower production and productivity is mainly in terms of reduction in their feed intake. Okay, even by various scientists, by various uh, time to time, they already they have reported that because the larval challenges, suppose the size of the larval challenge is directly proportional to the reduction in the production and productivity of the animal. So these ruminants are playing a with these larval challenges of the parasites are of major concern. No doubt, uh, we are giving the dewormer, dewormers in the uh, field conditions, but they are just a short term solution. So, okay, I can say clearly they are just a short term uh, uh, solution because they are nowadays we are knowing a term that is a parasitic or we can say anthelmintic resistance, which is playing a very important role by slowing down the process of these our dewormers. So, we should know the good knowledge. Uh, the main aim of us veterinarians, the prime aim of today's scenario is this only that we should have a good knowledge of parasites and how to implement the preventive measures because we always know it is well known the fact that prevention is always better than cure that's why the today's topic the parasite is always a managemental problem i can say in large term so it should always be have a uh, means we should always have a uh, good knowledge of these parasites their life cycles and also the uh, knowledge of the drugs which are effective for those specific targeted uh, species we can say then only we can implement the preventive measures so basically the ultimate objective of our today's talk was just how we can develop an animal production system. My aim was how we can develop a good farm with the knowledge of our dewormers, which are effective, as well as how we can uh, stop the growth of those parasites and how we can prevent their infestation in our herd. Okay, so basically when we are talking of a parasites means in an environment, so what are the typical signs we use to observe as a field veterinarians, as a doctors, as a veterinarian, or we can say as a director of those posts we know uh, basically the small ruminants they are always having a common scene in their clinical symptoms when one uh, one uh, owner or a farm owner or we can say a livestock owner approaches us they used to with their animals or with their farms details they used to always say that our animal or our farms are being infected with certain group of we don't know what's going on but our production is going down and uh, we are observing certain symptoms isn't it or the history they used to say so basically what are the common symptoms uh, we used to think of when we are thinking in the line of parasitic diseases. So basically weight loss, no doubt, diarrhea, one of the important signs, along with rough body coat, anemia. Anemia is of prime importance in case of hemonchosis, which is our prime important disease, which I will discuss in detail. Okay. Along with that, fast breathing, we can say fever. These are common symptoms. And one of the most important system along with our lung worms is coughing also. That is dictyopolis group, isn't it? And the most important sign is bottle jaw condition also in case of stomach flukes we can say stomach worms and the liver flukes we used to get a swelling under the jaw because of the accumulation of the fluid that is sub mandibular edema we used to see even in certain abdominal reasons also we used to get this uh, swelling of those areas so this is a bottle jaw conditions is a clear cut symptom of the parasitic infestation because of this gi parasites we are getting a economic loss mostly isn't it maybe in terms of reduced wool production we can say in fiber content or weight gain, nutrient utilizations, anything. And we are directly relating this production loss with the larval challenges. Okay, this has been reported time to time by various authors. We can see from this slide, I have shown certain authors papers also, where they have shown that when the larva challenge is more than 3000, or we can say 5000, they used to cause a reduction of 51 to 65%, even in the case of tri Trichostrongylus columbri from is they have shown that there is a reduction of approximately 90% also in case of the lambs who are receiving these larval challenges in their live weight gain. Okay, so we can say how much the economic loss these larvae are causing. L3 means the larval stage, the third infective stage, which is the which is always present in the pasture, isn't it? So even one scientist in the year 2012, Miller, he has also reported that in the, the lambs who whom 
we have we are giving the anthelmintic drugs okay no doubt we are dosing them but with lower efficacy suppose we have a good concept we used to say that okay benzimidazole groups of drugs are effective against all the parasites it's a common concept everywhere but when we talk on the resistance part suppose that drug it is not specific for the species which is acting or which is affecting the animal and that drug is off of lower efficacy it has been even noted that the animals used to reach their slaughter weight 17 days afterward means how much economic loss how much feed intake that animal we are providing for those 17 days and how they are converting that one in their efficient body weight that is a challenge to us isn't it uh, this was a uh, slide just to show the life cycle of basic nematode we all know in parasite basically first i will have a class like thing that uh, uh, we all know helminths okay helminths are nothing but the worms and those worms are basically divided into three groups one is trematode cystodes and nematodes trematode means we know flukes group flat worms cystode means the tape worms which are of uh, we can say they are flat worms and uh tape worms mostly and the third group is our uh, nematodes that is the round worms so basically when we are talking in terms of life cycle trematode and cystodes they have always indirect most of the parasites they have indirect life cycles because they are involving certain intermediate host to complete their life cycle like in case of flukes we can say uh, immature flukes or we can say amphistomes fasciola they are using snails as an intermediate host to complete the life cycle okay coming to the cystode portion that is the tapeworm we know monasia stylacea these are of prime importance isn't it so in those group we used to get the intermediate it was that is the orbited mites okay the dung be in the mites that are found in the dungs they are acting as a intermediate host so again there is a indirect life cycle coming to the nematodes nematodes have a totally different life cycle they are always means they always used to follow the direct life cycle means the larval stages which are present in the environment means l3 stage larval third stage that is the infective stage that is present in the environment or on the pasture so that portion is only infective and that is a direct life cycle without involvement of any intermediate host that's why nematodes are going through a direct life cycle okay so now coming to when why this is important why i'm talking on the life cycle aspect because friends we all know once we know the life cycle of the parasites that how they are continuing how they are going through definitely we can know the control measures means where we have to break the cycle isn't it once we know that orbited mite is the positive agent we will work on that once we know that snail is a positive agent we will work on that and once we know that our pasture has been contaminated our pasture has been infected definitely we will look for those control aspect okay because in case of nematode as most of the life cycle of the parasite is been played in the they are been follow means they are more, maximum portion of their life cycle is in the environment that is in the pasture that's why our target should be always on the pasture control so this chart clearly again i am showing you uh, the snails they are acting as a intermediate host this is a life cycle for the trematode and in this slide i have clearly shown you that the uh, the scientist hamilton he has clearly shown that the nematodes they used to spend majority of the their life that means 90% of their life we can say outside the host that's why our target should be the plausible option that is for us for parasitic control is always only targeting those pasture management site only okay this slide just to show how our market is been uh, means covered up by this parasiticidic drugs we can say this site clearly this slide shows that 23% of the market size means it is being occupied by our parasiticides drugs and among them sheep and cattle populations we can say they are contributing 6 and 19% respectively means they are utilizing those endectoside endocidic drugs okay means out of that market size means 23% of the market size are been covered up our by our parasiticides only so the challenge is for our producers as well for veterinarians what is the challenge we know that uh, this slide is showing again it was by pfizer 2011 they have shown that one third of the respondent they have seen they have a clear knowledge of this parasitic control products and percentage of the veterinarians as well as the producers they well know what does parasitic resistance or the anthelmintic resistance means but still 
they go and go on invariably using these anthelmintic drugs. So when we talk, ki means at what stage? Because as a veterinarian, our target should be, our mind should be specific on those points that at what point we should go on and we should uh, target the farmers or the livestock owners by saying that, okay, this is the right time to disinfect or we can use the dewormers to make clean our herd or make clean the farm. So uh, basically by sometimes scientists time to time, it has been reported that in case of liver fluke, suppose any number of eggs are if they are found, we should know that we should go for the treatment. Even in case of lung worms, dictyocolus, they have said that if any number of eggs are found in the feces, go for treatment. Among the barber worms, that is Hemonchus contortus, that is a we can say stomach worm, isn't it? They have said that more than 500 eggs per gram of feces. They have said that we should go then only for treatment, even for coccidia, which is nowadays a very big challenge in case of our lambs and kids. We can say more than 1000 of oocysts per gram of feces, then only we should go for the dosing. We all know because in small amount of these Imeria oocysts, they are acting as an immunity only for our newborns, okay? So uh, this slide just to show the different type of classes of internal parasites, which I have already talked three groups, nematodes, trematodes, and cystodes. Among them, we can see the GI parasites uh, involving intestine, duodenum, abomasum, the lung worms, we can say ascarids, and coming to the flatworm, cystodes, stenia, echinococcus, monasia, and among trematodes, trematodes, fasciola, and dicrocilium, which are the major liver flukes. Again, this slide, just to show what are the main internal parasites which are affecting the sheep and the goat populations, and uh, what are the infected organs, what are the sizes and mostly the symptoms and the pre-patent period is approximately three weeks in most of the stomach worms, okay? And uh, mostly the symptom that is encountered is diarrhea, weakness and anemia only along with submandibular edema in case of flukes, okay? So you can go through these uh, slides a uh, little bit more in detail and you can come to know that what are the common symptoms which we use to daily encounter and we can suspect for the different parasitic groups. So these are the pictures which my postgraduate students, they have collected during their study period. And in our area, mostly we got no doubt this diary conditions, nasal discharges, anemia and the bottle jaw, which are of prime important symptoms in case of GI parasites. These are the parasitic ovas, which which we used to encounter daily just to brush up your knowledge the strongyloids we can see the strongylovas the trichuries on our left side dumbbell shape the amphistome groups again this is fasciola right side we are getting the strongyloids larvae you can get the clear gut eight shape isn't it everyone used to encounter the lower bottom side we are getting the strongyl larvae as well as, sorry strongyl egg as well as the amphistomes and left sides we are getting on the top side the fasciola eggs also with operculated mass so according to food drug administration they have approved and even the animal medicinal drug Clarification Act, according to that, certain drugs are being always regularly approved for the use in sheep and goat. And we also used to approve for basically liver flux, coccidia, and this hemonchus group. We all know albendazole group of drugs, ivermectin, levamizole, and moxidectin group of drugs. They always used to say that go for lasalosid, no doubt for coccidia group of drugs. So as I have already told, Two group of the parasites earlier also we discussed, so we won't go in detail, but the most important common parasites, I think in each and every portions of the country, I think there is a challenge for the veterinarians regarding the stomach worms, liver flukes, uh, the, uh, even the immature amphistomes, as well as the coccidian parasites. So today, today the portions I will be targeting uh, on the control aspects of this particular group of parasites only. So before going in detail, little bit less talk that how this ship and go. Basically, we all know larger cattle and buffaloes are also there, but uh, small ruminants, they have a different feeding and browsing habit, isn't it? So how this group of animals, they get infested with the parasites. We all know, as I have already told, the pasture, the contaminated environment, that is only the major risk group, major portion, uh, which used to uh, play a very important role in the life cycle of this particular uh, parasitic uh, cycle, we can say for animals, small ruminants, okay? Mostly when we are talking for the liver flukes or the lung worms, I said already the stagnant water or the snails which are acting as an intermediate host there. Okay, and sheep and goats, you have this access to the stagnant water, they are at risk. 
coming to the nematodes mostly the stomach worms okay as the larvae the eggs they are on the wet vegetations and uh, the animals they have mostly they used to have the access to those pastures uh, the larvae are on the top of the or the tip of the blades of those grasses they have a clear cut access for these larvae and they are getting infected with this stomach worms larvae coming to coccidian parasite mostly as the developed uh, they don't have the younger ones have don't uh, they don't have a very well developed immune systems and uh, suppose during those uh, rainy conditions because we see uh, we used to see this parasitic infestation mostly uh, because of the seasonal variations also we know the parasitic diseases after rainy season only when the humidity is very high isn't it there is a rise of parasitic infestations in the field and more cases of those animals that's why overcrowding and uh, we can say um, managemental issues these animals are at risk uh, because of this coccidian parasites okay so when the animals are in the farms uh, in foreign countries there is a clear concept okay they know when to deworm and what are the different charts they used to have means they have a proper training the farmers or we can say the livestock owners they used to train them in trench areas they have a clear-cut knowledge that by seeing those charts only they used to assess that at what point at what condition at, at which stage of the animal they are means we are asking them that this animal is in diseased condition and then only we should go for dosing of the drugs that's why many charts are there developed by various scientists time to time among them i feel everyone know and well know about this farm cha chart isn't it farm cha uh, felon malan has developed a chart system uh, basically this chart is for humongous contortus parasite only which is a stomach worm based on this chart what they used to see they used to visualize means the, the inner uh, lower uh, uh, eyelids they used to examine for the different levels of anemia by the paler mucous membrane colors they used to evaluate those conditions and then at that point only when they get that there is a more paler conditions of the mucous membrane at that condition only they used to go for the drenching or we can say they used to go for the dosing of those animals so this chart is playing a very important role what is the main impact of this chart why we are using this chart isn't it it may be in our mind the thing is we should go for a proper appropriate timing only when we feel the animal is in need of dosing of drug irrespective of the age irrespective of the worms we should not always go blindly to worm uh, means to disinfect or we can say to deworm them isn't it so we should know at what level we should work on that that's why even to stop the enthalmic resistance also at farms level uh, we are using this chart second method is five point check method okay as i already told that that was by himonka that that uh, farm chart test was only for himonkers contortus only for other internal parasites they have shown that this five point checkpoints means what are this this identify the different point or the areas on the animal's body what are those five points which we can observe and we can suspect for a disease which can be caused by other group of the parasites okay it was developed by bath in the year 2009 so this was the system in this you can see five point check that is eye back rear jaw nose is in the case of ship only when we are suspecting for nasal warts that is caused by istrus ovis larvae okay as it is not the goats are not been affected so mostly in those cases the coat conditions are been observed okay so if i we are observing anemia we are getting farm chest scoring we are doing definitely the parasitic possibility what it is barber pole worm that is himonchus contortus or we can go for the liver fluke when we are looking for the jaw you see the jaw condition as i to told you regarding the bottle jaw condition what are the parasite possibility definitely the flukes amphistomes liver flukes and the coccidian uh, parasite this is a strategic control program you can see here clearly in the month of june and july we should always go for the deworming operations uh, to the cattle as well as for the calves also okay when we feel for the control of the internal parasites we should talk in those timings only as well as during the fall season also okay fall seasons only that we should go for the dewormers as i have already discussed the different signs of parasitic infestation again just to show how the flukes look like how the tapeworms look like this slide is just for that only now coming to the main topic of our concern that is the control aspect okay 
so friends uh, basically we all know how to control basic uh, just uh, the control thing is been divided into three subsections i can say basically in major two groups one is your by the use of chemical control means by the use of drugs that is anthelmintics or we can say anti parasitic drugs okay it may be anything we will talk in detail in that and the second portion is of our managemental conditions okay so firstly we will take on the control aspect that is by the chemicals we all know regularly we used to go for those only what these drugs used to do they eliminate the parasites okay if they are working on the parasitic nervous system they will paralyze them the parasites will be expelled maybe the adult one isn't it uh, even the gaba receptors they used to work on that or maybe the nutrient utilization by the parasites will be hampered or certain drugs used to limit the reproductive capacity indirectly killing the parasites stopping their life cycle okay so in this way this common classes of drugs that is benzimidazole ivermectin group of drugs they are acting okay and in by all appropriate route by all appropriate doses they have been administered in the field against the animals so basically when we are talking on this dosing of the drugs different methods are used by different farmers or livestock owners time to time depending on their condition so what are the factors basically we should keep in mind and we should also let the farmers or the livestock owners know that the climatic conditions of that area the stocking rate of the animals or the age of the animals the season and the resources that are been available with that owner of that area they can approach for different strategies okay like rotational treatment okay what does it mean we used to alternate the classes of the anthelmintic okay that the main aim is we used to avoid the resistance okay the second one annual rotation also certain group of farmers they go for no rotation means same drug they are using for last very years okay some groups are going for targeted treatment targeted means they know that our farm is been affected or infected by hemonchus only so according to that specific parasite only they are acting for that strategic treatment strategic means little bit before slide i have talked on that means administrating the drug at specific time period only means in during the fall season or we can say during the after the rainy season okay that is the strategic control program now coming to the treatment again treatment nowadays various scientists this chart is showing you clearly that many of the authors many of the scientists continuously they are working on that and they are founding that uh, different type of drugs like maybe copper wire particles or biocontrol agents like nematode trapping fungus they are using to control these internal parasites one of the effective method they have found that copper wire particles that is copper uh, wire particles they are using in case of ships and against that to also hemonchus only okay and they have shown that this copper wire particle is decreasing the parasitic load in these animals mostly the adult animals okay they have shown that 1 to 2 g of the doses is effective okay in case of newborns they are giving 0.5 to 1 g but they have shown that even there is if in higher doses they are using chances of toxicity is also there so little bit we have to be very cautious with using of this copper wire particles drugs now coming to nematode trapping fungi that is in nematophagus we used to say it is a fungus only we can say that used to trap the larva parasitic larva which is present in the feces okay in the pasture they interrupt that parasitic larva stage that is l3 stage they used to stop that uh, larva means to develop to those stages infective stages okay that's why it is also known as a bio control method that means a bioactive agent only we are introducing to control a parasite okay now the second portion which i was talking and which is of prime importance in controlling or we can say to prevent the reinfestation of the parasite is of managemental issue and in this management portion this management starts with various heads maybe we can say herd management we can say uh, farm management we can say pasture management we can say the uh, we can say the animal management the stocking density means management plays a very important role in the controlling or we can say in preventing the reinfestation of these parasites in that particular farm so coming to the uh, before going in that managemental aspect little bit we should know about the variability of the species and the age of those animals also because we know 
immunity and susceptibility these are two terms okay what do you mean by susceptibility susceptibility to parasite means how an animal it is easily been infected by that parasite okay and what do you mean by immunity the ability of that animal to prevent the establishment of the worm infection okay so this susceptibility means how the animal is easily becoming an infectivity it is been uh, means it has been in fact uh, we can say it has been influenced by various factors like according to the species of animal according to the age of the animal according to various conditions in the farm as well as the genes also so what do you, uh, when we are talking on according to the species susceptibility we know cattle buffalo sheep goat all are having the parasitic infestations but we find that sheep are more susceptible to infections of internal parasites than goat why because they graze closer to the ground level because of their feeding habit we know so this is a speed a species variation isn't it because because of their feeding habit they are getting more internal parasites as the l3 larvae are present there they have a natural habit of uh, browsing on the nature uh, whereas the goat what they used to do they used to take the top layers that's why little bit jo upar uh, the plants and the shrubs and the herbs whatever the things are there the plant stages they used to go on feeding on those levels that's why uh, the chances of infection is more in case of sheep than in compared to goats coming to the age variation also we all know young animals as they don't have well developed immunity they are at high risk of this parasitic infestations whereas adult animal they are little bit less susceptible as because of prolonged immunity we can say until if they are living in poor managemental conditions definitely the chances of infection is more in them also okay coming to other susceptibility uh, majors we can say uh, maybe the contaminated environment the deworming and the dewormers we are using or the poor body condition of that animal the food shortages the forage type the nutrition level of that animal the animal may become highly susceptible to the parasitic diseases as well as the genetic makeup also we know certain breeds and lines of animals which are tolerant like d llama it is a camel we know breed which is resistant for triplosomiasis similarly in new zealand they have found that certain ship group that is romney they have developed even they have developed certain resistant rams also genetically which are resistant uh, against this certain internal parasite now once we are in the farm or in the field uh, and we are feeling that we should go for a control program okay before starting any control program our aim is to assess the situation okay let me see whether my farm really needs a treatment whether this area really needs uh, means like we should go for the dewormer or we should just approach for the control and preventive measures for that reason two approaches are always targeted one is fecal count one is field count okay what is fecal count fecal count means fecal analysis we always used to do in our laboratory we all veterinarians what we used to do by two method either by the herd analysis herd means whole herd we used to randomly collect the fecal samples from all the group of animals and determine their general state or their herd condition isn't it if they get we just say okay absence of parasite low level high level infections we go for the dewormers another is individual analysis which is very important why at because individual animal we are targeting at the same time period during that certain period only we are taking the fecal samples when the load is high and we are just assessing the load of the parasite in per gram as well as we are even assessing which species it is getting infected isn't it so that's why individual analysis plays a very important role in when we are targeting or we are feeling for a control program method okay friends as we know that one health approach deals with three triangles or three portion we can say what that is human animal environment similarly for managing the internal parasites also there is a basic understanding of the interaction we are having between animal the parasites and the pastures okay so this plays a very important role this triangle that's why this slide just to show you that how the parasite is been affected we know internal parasites always increases when when there is good weather condition climatic condition the resistance of the animal is low they are the host depending on the host also even if they are long time they are been grazed on the pasture which are been infected there is a load of parasite okay for what they are vulnerable we know when there is dry state means sunlight is more larva are not there 
resistant breeds are there isn't it effective dewormers are there nematophagus fungi or we can say biocontrol agents are there definitely the internal parasites are less in those conditions so this triangle just to show ki how these all three things are interacted and they are been attached with one another uh, for parasitism we all know as i have already talked with you and i have told you that there are certain factors which are affecting we can't say if the animal is in proper health condition the immunity of that animal is good definitely the load will be low it doesn't mean the animal is not been infected okay so what are the factor we should see the class of the animal which are been infected the stage of production at which stage the pregnant stage early stage immune stage or they are in the older phase the quality and quantity of the nutrition of those animals the immune status of those animals how much the larva they have taken the density of those animals everything plays the grazing habit everything plays a very effective way in strategic control program okay now coming to the second one that was the field count okay field count means the pasture management now the role of pasture comes here okay pasture management means we will take the samples from those areas which are representative or the pastures which are been grazed by those animals okay we will take from the top forages there is a method pasture larva count okay it is in manuals of various parasitological manuals and we know uh, there is a process in a zigzag manner or z manner or the uh, square method we used to cut the forages we used to dip in the solution we used to take the sediment and we used to evaluate that in one slide one sample we in the one field how many larva are present and according to that we used to assess the count or the larva load in those areas and then only we used to prescribe the livestock owner whether they should let their animals to graze in those areas and or they should go for a resting period in those air pastures okay now the last topic that is the preventive measures okay how to go for the prevention okay as i already said herd management and soil management this is very important apart from our dewormers herd management means individual animal management that means what are the important factors as i already told the living condition of the animal the area the water okay the water supply the nutrient content the forages or the vaccines or the iron supplements the uh, crops or we can say the different uh, vitamin supplements mineral supplements which we are providing them okay that plays a very important role in controlling this parasites like in this slide i have clearly shown you that vitamins and minerals particularly adb complex they used to make the animal to develop a resistance against internal parasite along with that cobalt also cobalt okay then iron supplements they are very important when we are talking for ankylostoma or hemonchus group isn't it anemia and uh, even the mineral blocks the animal should be given the feeders they should be given mineral minerals in large amount in pastures along with that even uh, the forages which are having tannins in them okay uh, it has been prescribed by scientists time to time that the, those animals we are getting the tannins level more they have a capacity more to better fight with this parasites compared to those animals which are not on those forages okay even the age of the weaning of the animals it had been shown that the animals which are weaned the weaned calves they are more contaminated with hemonchus cooperia and esophagus tuma more okay because it depends when the female is calving okay we should take that time period also into our notice then only the risk of contamination suppose we know that at this point of time the pastures or the area will be having low contamination level the young animals will be lately exposed for those contaminated pastures so definitely they will be having a capacity that the risk of contamination will be low in that time so we should assess that time only they should be allowed to calve during those periods only okay even the new arrivals which are coming we should make a habit that they should be quarantined they should be dewormed they should be examined properly that they are not bringing up some new parasites to our herd okay because we all know healthy animals 
इट्स अ टिप मैनेजमेंट एनिमल मैनेजमेंट में सबसे इंपॉर्टेंट क्या है वी ऑल नो हेल्थी एनिमल दे आर बेटर एबल टू फाइट विद द पैरासाइटिक बर्डन इवन द स्ट्रेस एनिमल द इम्यून एनिमल इवन इन द केस ऑफ ह्यूमन बींग कोविड हैज वेल नोन मेड अस द हैबिट ऑफ दे हैव मेड मेड अस अंडरस्टैंड दैट इफ आवर इम्यूनिटी इज लो वी आर बीन अटैक्ट बाय वेरियस ग्रुप ऑफ पैरासाइट सब्सिक्वेंटली बट व्हेन वी टॉक्ड ऑफ अ क्लीन पैस्चर ओके क्लीन पैस्चर नाउ द कांसेप्ट ऑफ जीरो ग्रेज Games. Zero grazing ka importance. The important is now only. What is the effective method? What do you mean by zero grazing? Zero grazing means the ships are reared at on a dry lot only. Means no grazing. Okay. Once we make them on a resting period, then only the means the larval contamination will be stopped there itself. Okay. Because we know pastures. Uh, here the slide shows what are the different factors which are affecting a parasitism in terms of pastures so pastures which are containing the tannins or which are uh, good in means like we have a uh, less density of grazing in those areas or we are making a mixed species multi species grazing definitely those pastures are having low level of contamination of larvae in them isn't it so those type of pastures could be used even zero grazing means the animal should be restricted in the barn itself only they can't be allowed for grazing okay so the principles for this pasture management pasture management ke liye what are the main principles we should look for we should always go for the what are the first thing we should go for low stocking rate of the animal okay multi species grazing rotational grazing even we should give them a long resting period long resting period to those forages or those pastures even we should offer them different forages to browse okay not making them directly to go to those grazing areas only to those pastures only even those grazing areas should be made clean pastures okay clean pastures means the same stock should be minimized means they should not be allowed for a time period not to graze on that that will make it a clean grazing area okay uh, so uh, the exposure will be reduced by various factors like as i have talked to you stocking rate the animal's density should be lower down we can give them access for certain bioactive forages uh, we should use certain resistant animals breeds like mixing of the breeds and we can also make them to graze on certain other or regrow or regrow themselves on hay crop silages we can say even we can make them to move to the rest contaminated areas mein wo nahi jaye and they should given a plenty of forages okay so this can reduce the exposure of those animals strategically we can reduce the exposure of that animal to that contaminated pastures and it can be provided uh, in the other end we can even provide them nutritional supplements in terms of energy protein minerals uh, even we can give them uh, maintaining their immune status with the help of certain forages also during that uh, means like that resting time so definitely uh, these are certain principles which we can keep in our mind to have have a pasture management aspect so that the animal can have a reduced exposure to those areas clean pastures i already talked that pastures that is not been grazed by same species within a within a year okay so that is a considered a clean one we can say the contamination of the larvae will be nil there very low okay and uh, this will only make the animal uh, protect and there only the risk of parasitism will be lower down we already talked on this uh, supplements bioactive medicinal forages i have talked on that now coming to the pasture management earlier we were talking on herd management now we are talking on pasture management pasture management what are the different factors which is playing important role one is animal density this is very important in one pasture how many animals we are allowing to graze that plays a very important we should have a clear knowledge how because depending on the animal load on that pasture or the fecal load they are defecating there then definitely if overpopulation is there it will increase the concentration of the parasites in those fields that's why it has been found that if the density of animal is double the parasitic level is four time higher okay so we should think always that the in a given area a given parcel of land it should have a proper animal density only okay in extensive grazing scientist antony has recommended 10 lambs in 1 hectare of land okay even pasture rotation now rotation of the pasture as i talked that as much as we will rotate or the rotation time is increase definitely the parasitism will decrease okay because the larvae l3 stages will 
turn off then the grazing height the grazing height of the plants that means it has been seen that 80% of the parasites they live on the top 5 cm of the vegetation that's why always it is recommended that the animal should graze only 10 cm from ground means they don't allow them on the top but as the forages they are very green and lushy it means very attractive on the top blades only and the animal has a tendency to take from those areas so always we should see in um, keep in mind the grazing time that means we should allow the animal during the high sun sign when there is high sunlight means the dews uh, the uh, grasses are properly dried up at that point of any uh, time only the animal should be allowed to go for grazing and the top plant when the larvae will move down means the larvae are not on the that will diminish the risk of infection at that point of time only that's why we know in summer season it is a clear concept the parasitic load is low whereas in case of uh, poor sunlight spring season we can say during fall density of l3 larvae is more so that's why far more mostly we used to get the parasitic infestation even during spin season we can go for the hay hay options also okay now coming to harrowing pasture harrowing pasture means we know the parasites mostly accumulate in those environment where there is no proper sunlight and they are nitrogen rich okay so the animals <clears throat> during dry period they should be harrowing means those harrowing forages should be given they should be means we should properly break up those forages packs okay proper light ventilations drying of those harrowing pasture should be done and then only that could be fed to those animals during dry period okay now coming to the another thing is grazing uh, grazing uh, we can say the ages mostly younger animals we used to prefer I, as i talked about the weaned animal age of weaning isn't it we know the you should not be allowed to go in the field until the lambs are weaned means means when they will go in the field definitely they will come back with the parasitic load and the chances of infection to the weaned means before weaning the lambs are more that's why we should always allow the adult animal or the use during that period only when the lambs are already weaned okay moreover they should not be given the younger animals we should not make them to graze in those areas where the parasitic load is more because their immunity is down okay uh, even rotational grazing should be done multi species grazing means cattle and sheep together with it. three strategies are there alternate grazing of those different animals uh, species what is the aim just to break the life cycle because certain parasite are specific to cattle only certain group of parasites impact only the sheep and goat only so when we mix the multi species horses also what will be there means either you allow the cattle to graze first and then the sheep or before the sheep allow the cattle or together like that we make this uh, thinking we just make multi species grazing making the Uh, load of parasites in that area low breaking the parasitic cycle these are certain things even resting of the land resting of the land we know uh, because in control methods when we talked we should make the land to rest rest means 3 years they used to give that that to eliminate the infectious larva suppose a land or the pasture is heavily infested with the parasitic larva what is the aim we should make that area rest for at least 2 3 years and the grazing of the paddocks uh, means we can say the uh, species should not be allowed in that area preventing the animals to go to those areas. Areas, okay even we can use certain nematicide plants also like mustard which used to kill down those nematodes larvae even the fertilizers amendments which used to change the ph mineral balances okay and they create an inappropriate environment for those parasitic larvae like nscl copper sulfate you can see in this slide i have clearly written that copper sulfate is effective against dictyocolous lungworms okay even uh, they have shown that um, nscl against ankylostoma bunostomum larvae they are very effective once we add this uh, fertilizer along with fertilizers amendments in the soil definitely it's going to manage that pasture okay the load will be lower down even manure management manure management means composting okay we should know how to uh, means we have to clean the manure okay because the manure is a good source for larvae and the eggs the temperature that used to kill the larvae in that particular uh, manure is very important we should have a good knowledge that composting is very important we should always go for adding certain nitrogen fertilizers efficient nitrogen fertilizer like urea type of things which used to uh, make a 
composting manure, okay, indirectly killing or destroying the nematode larvae. Then the drainage system of that area means uh, proper drainage, we can say drained areas because uh, wet areas, they are the important source for the survival of the internal parasites larvae. So always the pastures, the part of the pastures or the drainage of those areas should be in uh, such conditions, it should be dry or above the, uh, uh, above the, means we can say ground level, even cemented so that it can have reduced larval survival and uh, it will help the animal for their uh, less infections of parasites. Now, uh, as we have talked in detail about the parasite parasites, and we all know how to deworm. Okay, I think as a veterinarian, there is nothing to more to talk on that we all know that we should go for a proper means the animals should not be fed before also means they should be properly fed water and everything before giving any deworming means and after also a laxative diet should be given like castor oil should be added along with that uh, liquid deworming treatments, we should always go for using that funnels even diuretics are given to those animals even on the when we are applying for certain ectoparasitic drugs like acaricidal drugs we should use the sprays and all and the animal should not be allowed or to assess to lick those animals together with like that only so these are common things we know when to go and how to deworm the animals okay deworm or we can say um, for external parasites how to go for it now coming to one of the important part that is the last portion that Nowadays, many scientists from previously also, they all are moving and we all know natural therapies, that is the biocontrol agents, okay? We all know that certain plants, they are till now, they till today, they act as a certain potent dewormers, okay? Which are very, they are having very good effect for the parasite controls. Even the American Consortium for Small Ruminant Parasite Control Group, they have chosen that alternative treatment method with these drugs only, that is biocontrol agents, okay? And even we have also found that these biocontrol agents, because they don't have any side effect, no resistance, nothing like that, okay? And they're easily available, easy assess are there. So this could be used as an alternative source for treatment of the animal to prevent them from reinfesting with those parasites like garlic, okay, easily available. It is a very good potent dewormer, we can say, again, ascaris, against lungworm, against antrobius, and it is more prophylactic compared to therapeutic approach. Why? Because it used to kill the egg, Okay, the egg won't develop to larvae. So the cycle is stopped there itself. Okay, because of its high sulfur content, that's why that smell we used to get, they are making. So what are the different ways by which we can give them? Various ways are there. Either the whole bulb can be given along with the honey or something because of their taste or the powdered form, the pill form, the full tincture form, juice form, or garlic milk. In any way, they all are effective. And that has been shown by various scientists time to time in various dose rates. They have shown that in various dose rates, they are more efficient in controlling the internal parasites. Even worm wood, okay? They have shown that the crust flowers of this worm wood or the dried flowers, they are using as a dewormers. The santonin, that is an active ingredient in that, and it is effective against all group of internal parasites, okay? Uh, homeopathic, we used to get a term sina, isn't it? And they used to give two, three drops also, or maybe in a form of, we can say granules also, they are prescribing. So same in the case of animals, once we are giving the dried form, or we can say uh, the crust flowers forms, uh, even we can allow these plants to grow along with the pastures, okay? And the animal will go and have an assess, and definitely it is having a very good deworming property it can be act. even the wild gingers goose foods it is a good dewormer plant okay they have seen that the tea uh, means dewormer tea are prepared with these leaves and it can be given to the animals conifers like garlic in russia they have shown that against ascaris against strongylus against ruminant liver fluke and the oils of this plant even the turpentine oils distillation products the spirits if uh, linseed oil if they are uh, mixture they are using they have got a powerful dewormer they have seen that ki, uh, in 10 to 15 drops only if it is uh, given to the ship they have got a very good effect against the liver flukes okay even crucifers like mustard seed we were talking in india also we are using mustard oil isn't it and it is more uh, in terms of laxative than a dewormer and it used to eliminate the parasites uh, cucurbits like squash pumpkins 
okay this crops can be used against the humongous contortus you can see nowadays pumpkin seed dewormer it is acting as a natural dewormer for the goat this is a method how they are taking the pumpkin seed Uh, crushing it and pulling it, squeezing the juices, and uh, then they are taking that oily portion and refrigerating it, and uh, taking that portion only as a natural dewormer. So this is a method just to show how we can prepare a pumpkin seed dewormer also for the sheep and goat. Even the ferns. male ferns they have seen that the extract of the male ferns it is very effective against liver flukes okay they have shown that they used to get gas uh, means very satisfactory result with our dicrocilium group of flukes in case of sheep the lupines they have shown that they are active against various intestinal worms like uh, in the paper you can see trichuris 100% strongyloid 66% ascaris 50% it is very much efficient against these intestinal worms okay even the areca nuts they have shown they have also have a anthelmintic effect hazelnuts and they are using it against ascaris as a dewormer okay carrot seeds fennel leaves fennel seeds also they are using it is as a dewormers to uh, just uh, means disinfect the sheep population against humongous pyrethrum okay uh, no doubt in heavy dose it used to cause poisoning but if we are taking it in a uh, insecticidal form or anthelmintic form and in a powder form we, when we are giving the animals we have seen that 100% effective results in case of chickens also okay complete cure from ascarid they have seen this one okay even in uh, horses also they have got the results against strong hylas uh several other berries tobacco we know a very good dewormer nicotine product is there even a brichwood chrysoid it is also used against lung worms in ruminants and these are certain other indian hams the roots and uh, various other products uh the name i have written here this all group of products are having a very good deworming properties apart from that diatomaceous earth also which is made from the remains of the Marine algae. Okay, they are taking that one, and two percent of this is added with the ration. They got a very good result because they used to tear down the um, in cells of the insects, arthropods we have seen, and uh, they are being used in ration. And it is acting as a very good dewormer. Okay, even surfactant like Sakli's basic X surfactant. They have shown by American farmers and various other scientists that they used to give a very good result. Copper sulfate, we all know, action against humongous and trichostrongylus. even other product like charcoal peroxide they are also having very good deworming properties so finally just i want to conclude the take home away message is this only that two three lines i just want to conclude when we are talking on a parasitic control measure we should have a very basic and good knowledge of parasite their life cycle the various factors which are affecting their susceptibility their resistance in animals okay maybe the age maybe nutrition the immune status anything or the management okay when we are talking for control management we should always assess the situation by counting the fecal counts okay by various charts we should assess the situation then only the first stage is going for the dewormers okay proper timing of deworming then the use of biocontrol agents or the homeopathic remedies we can say the botanical dewormers okay which are nowadays very easy to assess and they without any side effect so it is always that we should opt for this biocontrol active ingredients because in organic farming the last line is this only that we are not aiming to eliminate the parasite but we know that a small dose is required for immune status also so what is our aim just to make a uh, environment or the pasture free of parasite so that the animal cannot be infected those those parasites in large uh, means large amount and that will be very uh, we can say very dreadful uh, in terms of morbidity and mortality for our small ruminant producer so lastly i just want to say that only just op just think twice before using any dewormer use appropriately and then only assessing the situation go for the deworming products and firstly opt for always the managemental control so that the animal can be the life cycle of the parasite could be controlled at that level only the later phase that is the therapeutic approach will be required less that's all thank you very much